us, bitch! The fuck wrong with you? Nigga! You finna get left behind, I swear to God. Bro! I will shut you down. I will shut you down. Bitch, stop it. Speaking of iconic, um, these are trends that BTS has created. So, let's see what trends BTS has created. Y'all want to know a little secret? I got a Patreon. Over there is where we watch exclusive videos. You know what I'm saying? For example, we got Queendom, Kingdom, Road to Kingdom, Bon Voyage, In the Soup, DVDs, K-dramas, pretty much anything that can't go on the channel. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, Go ahead over to my Patreon. Let me know what you think about it. You know what I'm saying? But if not, it's still cool. It's it's, it's okay. You know? All I ask for you to do is subscribe. Leave a like down below. And tell your friends about me. Um, So that's about it. Let's get back to the video. K-pop? Maybe? Yeah? I don't know. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's go. Unlike other Korean groups, Ooh. BTS lacked the resources and opportunities Video essay. We love those. had in the Korean music and entertainment Caption. industry. This is why they had to find ways of creating and spreading their own content. So naturally, there are some trends that BTS has accidentally created or accidentally. helped popularize. So in this video, I'm going to rank All some right, of bet them. Mercy. But before, I want to highlight that I'm not saying that BTS invented all of the following things, just that they made them trends. I repeat, BTS did not invent all of these things they just okay all right bet so all right so she's not saying bts admitted all these things but i am show me what you got yes popularize them so please <laughs> watch the full video with my explanations before commenting also a special thank you to watch this video if i say anything if i say anything stupid <laughs> Just comment first and then watch the video later. <laughs> to Mega, who let me add some things from her Twitter thread. Number 11, popularizing big performances. Really? Oh. I came across a tweet that said that Shit. BTS popularized putting 30, 50, or even 100 people on stage. Really? Hey. And on this video by the channel Hey Day, Korean dancers said that BTS were the ones who started to have lots of dancers and that it became a hot topic when they did it. I'm not gonna lie to you, that probably is not a bad take because I have not seen that many people on one stage until I, well, got into K-pop, but until like I saw BTS do it. I'm not gonna hold you. So I don't know if other groups had hundreds of backup dancers before, but the fact that BTS became a hot topic in the Korean dancing community when they did oh, it shows that they at least the helped popularize it in the country. Number ten, the Tiny Sevens on Twitter. I want to clarify. Bro, yes, they did. Oh my God. Y'all don't understand how many people I have seen with that tiny seven before I started watching K-pop. I, bro, I start, bro, I never knew where that shit came from. <coughs> Sorry. I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a fake verified check mark or something. Cause I was like, okay, so there's a, there's like a little tiny thing by somebody's name. Oh, that probably means that they're verified on Twitter. Come to find out that was a fucking seven from BT. Wow. Armies did not invent this, we just made it a trend. Although this had already been done before, it was in 2020 when media outlets and non-fans started noticing that a lot of Twitter accounts included a small 7 after their name. This was a way of celebrating and promoting the release of Map of the Soul 7, as well as their 7th anniversary. But the number 7 is so important to BTS that we never stopped using it. Since it also represents the 7 members, this important album in BTS's career, BTS breaking the 7 year K-pop curse, as well as good luck. Also 7? Like means of very good luck, like right? Yeah, yeah. like jackpot. Lucky number seven. Yeah, lucky. Seven is also the number for completion in the Bible. So, 
<laughs> it's <get> biblical. <laughs> Number seven. And I say that this really became a trend when armies started doing it because it was the first time it was actually noticeable. Around that time, there were a lot of articles explaining the trend to locals who googled what does the tiny to seven locals. on Twitter mean. <laughs> this had such a big impact that many famous verified accounts joined the trend, such as Paper Magazine, hey. Mason Ramsey, hey. DJ Swivel, The Tonight Show. Wait, and was that the yodeling nigga? Wait. Isn't Mason Ramley Ramsey Mason Ramsey ain't that the nigga that was yodeling in front in Walmart? Team Mason Ram That is him. That is him. I'm seeing oh, DJ shit. Swivel, The Tonight Show, that and The Late Late Show. <laughs> Nowadays, it's extremely common for other fandoms to include a symbol that represents their favorite artist when they have a comeback. That's and tough. I've also seen fans of movies, series, and YouTubers doing the same. That's tough. Number nine, reacting to their own music videos. <laughs> Mm. Trend centers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I really couldn't find any other artists that released reactions to their own music videos before BTS. That's also so true. even if someone did it before, their impact was not as big as BTS's because since they did it, it became a common thing in K-pop, wow. and now everyone does it. <laughs> they put peanuts next to Number you. eight, unboxing their own albums. <laughs> It's crazy how these are like literally like just normal things to do, but they just like made it popular. Like you, you would think like, oh, of course an artist reacts to their own music video. Of course an artist opens their own album to see what's in there. That's mm, that's interesting. <laughs> That's and the same goes with singers who do unboxing videos of their own albums. Mm. Suga has been doing unboxing and reviews since BTS's first album in 2013. And then all the guys from BTS started doing the same. I really couldn't find other artists that did this before BTS. But the fact that now it's expected for K-pop acts to do this type of video Visual. shows that BTS... What did I say? Visualizaciones. Visu Visualizaciones. I say 10 messes. That says 10 months ago. I say 10 messes. That's 10 months ago. Yeah, yeah. At least started the trend. Number seven, giving their fandoms a matching logo. Beyonce. That's so tough. BTS. That's so tough. It was always pretty That's common so for tough. singers to give their fandoms a name. However, BTS were the first to give their fandom a logo, and not That's any so logo, tough. but a matching fandom logo in 2017. Oh, Since then, so other groups have also given logos to their fandoms, and some of them also match their group logos. Number <laughs> six, releasing music on Fridays. No fucking way. No fucking way. No fucking way. There's no 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 way. Bruh. No fucking way. Because if anybody, were y'all like paying attention like, because they used to drop music on Tuesdays. Like everybody used to drop music on Tuesdays. And it, it like somehow people were just dropping on Fridays. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. There's no way they started that. Well, you know, made it popular. But there's no way everybody in the music industry drops on Fridays. Oh, my God. Like, the reasoning why everybody drops on Fridays is because, like, yeah, it's easier access to Billboard so they can, like, calculate all the, the weekly sales and all that other bullshit. But that's crazy. In the United States, uh, artists put out singles. One single, two single, what? three single before the record drops. In South Korea, you don't do that. For years, Korean artists have released their... What'd you say in your message? What that said? If you think about it, it completes each other. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, that's why they put the little thing at the thing thing. You know what I'm saying? I just, yeah, that's, bro, that's so tough. Songs and albums on Mondays, since the tracking week for Korean music shows begins on this day and ends on Sundays. However, uh. since BTS saw a real opportunity for success in the West, they've been releasing their music on Fridays because the Billboard charts tracking week begins on Fridays and ends on Thursdays. So releasing music on Fridays will make the artists lose points in Korean charts since only three days are being counted instead of the full seven. 
However, BTS are the only ones that could release on Fridays and still accumulate enough points to sweep the entire following What? week on music shows, with only three days of tracking, as we've seen on music shows for the past year. This video is so, blowing my mind. So, since they started doing this, other Korean singers began doing the same, risking their first wings on Korean music shows and prioritizing their small chance in the Billboard charts. The whole killer is not everybody can do that, though. Like, not everybody can do that. Not everybody can, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, afford to do that. Number five, Halloween dance practices. Hey. Bro, this, this video is blowing my mind. I'm not gonna hold you. Dance practice videos have always been a common thing in K-pop. However, BTS were the first ones to release Halloween-themed <laughs> dance practices. Sadly, they stopped this tradition, but the trend is still alive, since now it's a very common mm. thing in K-pop. I want to quickly mention that the most recent Halloween content we had was this, and it's so funny, but it's better Bro, than nothing, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, number four, Twitter accounts. Mm. What? Yeah. BTS were the first Korean artists to be extremely active on social media, even before their debut. This was their only way of promoting themselves, since their label did not have the resources to promote them the traditional way, which was on TV. This was around a time when interactions between K-pop acts and fans were so heavily billboard? restricted and moderated oh. by their companies. So BTS were the first ones to have real open communication via social media, especially on Twitter. This is why in 2017, BTS were nominated and got their first big American award, the Top Social Artist at the Billboard Music Awards. Uh, okay, Only got days got after you. they got the award, many K-pop groups opened Twitter accounts and started releasing content similar so to tough. BTS's. Thanks to BTS, being active on social media so is now tough. a must in K-pop. That's so tough. Having their own YouTube channel? Bro, what the f- Yeah, oh my god. Number three, having their own YouTube channel. <laughs> Nowadays it's almost impossible. Oh, did y'all know? Um so here's a here's an interesting um here's an interesting tidbit. Did y'all know that the first like American rapper to actually be like on YouTube or like be present on YouTube was Joe Budden? <laughs> For a group to debut without a YouTube channel that includes oh casual content, such as vlogs, behind the scenes, and other videos similar to BTS's Bangtan Bombs and Bangtan episodes. But it was not always like this. BTS have been releasing <laughs> this type of casual behind the scenes content on their YouTube channel since pre debut. But it was only after BTS started gaining significant worldwide popularity <laughs> that other groups started their own YouTube channels. And I really don't think it's a coincidence that all of these groups started their YouTube content on November of 2017. After they won their first Billboard Music Awards, there were groups that first created their YouTube channels, groups that revived their abandoned YouTube channels, and groups that mm. rebranded their YouTube channels to include more personal content and not only music videos and performances. Of course, I'm not saying that BTS invented having YouTube channels or releasing casual nah, they, more nah, personal nah, content. They, they, they invented YouTube channels. They invented YouTube. BTS invented YouTube. I actually found a couple of others that did the same, but none of them to the extent of BTS or as successful as them. JK Proving that Chipotle. it was at least an inspiration <laughs> to these other groups to do the same. Number two, popularizing B Live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbor, the Google of Korea, launched their live video streaming service B Live, also known as B App. In 2015, the website had a couple of groups active since its release, but BTS were the ones Imagine. who started gaining massive worldwide success around this time. Therefore, yeah, and they said <laughs> this nigga said BTS they paved the way. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so they were the ones that brought the most international traffic to the app. Hey. Nowadays, almost every K-pop artist uses this website, which now has 1,450 K-pop channels. Damn. And a fan fact, BTS's company Hive has now bought b -Live, so it's not under Naver Damn. anymore, it's under Weaver's company. Damn. But the app did not only become popular because BTS had live streams here. Since BTS were known for releasing more personal and casual content, b -Live saw a significant growth when they decided to release their own shows on the app. This is why number one is making their own online variety shows. Damn. 
The biggest type of content BTS has created is making their own online variety shows. Wow. Before them, there were a couple of K-pop groups that had their own variety shows, but all of them were filmed and broadcasted by Korean broadcasting stations. And again, since BTS came from a very small company, they were not invited to pre-existing variety shows. And That's so tough, bruh. That's literally just saying, oh, y'all don't want us on there? Okay, then we finna make our own. And guess the fuck what? <laughs> Having a TV network Bruh, to produce their what? own was even harder than being invited to one. That's this is so why tough. they created oh Run BTS, God. their own variety show available only online and also the first variety show ever to not be affiliated to pre-existing broadcasting Damn. stations. Run BTS was filmed by their own staff and posted on BeLive for free. And their other show, Bon Voyage, was posted on the premium version of BeLive. And like I just mentioned, this show's popularity guaranteed the success of the app. Now, almost every Korean group has their own variety show it's with similar content to the one on BTS. YouTube. The majority ah. of them are easily accessible on YouTube or BeLive. And of course, since BTS became the biggest group in the world, they began to be invited to every variety show. And broadcasting stations are more than happy to premiere their other shows, such as In The Soup on cable TV. <laughs> That is so fucking tough. And get ready because Run BTS is coming back soon. It's already here, baby. A fun moment. <laughs> hey. Okay. Bruh. Pause, bitch. What the fuck wrong with you? Nigga. You finna get left behind. I swear to God. Bruh. I will shut you down. I will shut you down. Bitch, stop it. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, why is my computer doing that? I was about to say, bro, and they really said BTS, BTS did not pave the way. Like, what? God damn, that was a good video. Shout out to Boris City Magazine. Hey, that was a good video. That really blew my mind. Holy shit, bro. That's crazy. Damn. We're really not finna get anything like BTS again. That is crazy.